Do you want me to start? <laughs> you go. I, um, I found myself back in Nelson uh, in about 2000 and by accident started working for a, um, a pretty um, senior architect, is that the way to put it? Ian Jack. <laughs> Uh, and so after about three years, Ian and I went into business together. He was looking for someone to take the load of the practice off him. So we started off as Irving Jack Architects. And about six months after that, he turned up. Uh, and we, I figured that I'd rather have him in the tent than in someone else's. So he started working for us. And I guess um, not necessarily intentionally, but um, Jeremy was really keen to stay in Nelson. And it suited me to have... Um, two young voices uh, at partners' meetings to um, counteract the senior conservative voice. Uh, so it didn't take very long, and so we set up. It was Irving Smith, Jack Architects then, and probably for the last two years, it's just Jeremy and I. Um, we, live in, we live in a um, quite a small city in, in a kind of particularly beautiful part of New Zealand, but it doesn't have a, it's And so everyone who lives here... Um, sort of makes a choice to live here, not in the big city. So we've got this kind of nice collection of people in the office. And the office is really just configured with an enormous table down the middle, which is sort of how we work. So it's got a table that, I don't know how long it is. Four metres. Four, four metres. It's a great, a great big long table, and it's wide. And um, so we, we, we uh, allow us to be quite communal. So we all, everyone's sort of understanding what's happening and everyone's part of everything. Um, and I guess that's, we can do that because of this, you know, we're not huge in size. Uh, it means we can run the office almost like a studio, yeah? And everyone knows, everyone knows what's going on with the other jobs. If someone has a thought or if someone's got some experience, there's an easy way to tap into it. Yeah. And so, you know, the we're more than the sum of our parts because of that, I think. No, you, everyone, everyone contributes, and it's. I think it's a. I think it's a, a different model for a design practice, anyway. Yeah, it, 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 it's basically. It's almost like um, uh, as you learn architecture at university, and we, we we run it pretty communally, and everyone's on everything, and it's really based on if everyone's around the big table, it's easier to get that big answer <coughs> right. I think it makes the the philosophy of the practice it kind of penetrates into everyone on the staff as well. It's not just something that we're holding in an office at one end. Of, you know, everyone everyone kind of understands where we're going and what the important things are in the job, and I think that helps. Yeah. In practice, we we tend to like projects. That we have to research, yeah, and that and that are unusual, and that probably have a question, you know, that, that we have to solve something, um, and so that and they're all different, and so we 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 kind of set up as a way of taking on these, you know, slightly unusual projects in different parts of the country or wherever they are, um, and then researching to find a way that fits, and and. That's what we probably, and that's irrespective of scales. So all those buildings that we're going to talk about are a wee bit like that. They all have a question, and they all have something unusual about them that we kind of find a good way of solving. Oh, it's provocative. Yeah. Another kind of practice kind of thing. We've we've just I don't know if the exhi exhibition's still going, but we got asked to exhibit at the Prague International Architecture Festival, which just recently. I might still be going. And what we gave them was a kind of a thing about our approach to context, which is what we, we sort of called soft soft architecture and soft context. And it's this notion that, um, maybe you jump in, but, but, but it's this notion that, that New Zealand is the last place to be inhabited, the last inhabitable place in the world to be inhabited. And then once it got inhabited, it was changed quicker than anywhere else. So, the great irony to New Zealand, which promotes itself as being amazingly green and, you know, it has got all this amazing wilderness that you can get to very easily, but it's actually one of the most contemporary landscapes in the world because most of it's been changed mm. very, very, very recently. And so our what we gave 
Prague was this kind of idea that what we're interested in is that we understand the context we've got better before we make new context. So whereas most of the world is, is going, um, you know, trying to make new landscape and make new context, we're so young and it's been, what we've got is so recently got yeah. or made that we, our idea is that you participate um, you know, you, under, you try and learn what you've got and you participate with the content. Residential construction in New Zealand is almost 100% more than it is in Australia. Got, and it's about, a part of it's about economies of scale. Yeah. There are only four and a half million of us and um, we've just got a tiny economy. And there's not enough houses in New Zealand. So, you know, there's not enough houses and there's only that many people mm. and they're trying to build more and more. Well, you're obviously going to put the price up, right? Um, but so, it's, so it's expensive. Building expensive in New Zealand. I guess the question that we often end up asking ourselves is what's the best building we can make and do we need that? Is often a thing yeah, we're talking about. Do we need that? Mm. If we take that out, is it still a decent building? Yeah. Um, and that's uh, yeah. the nature of, especially this provincial economy. We do, we do work reductively. If, if, if every element, we, we, we sort of talk about elements in buildings. Yeah. So if every element we put in the building does one thing, well, that's okay. You know, it's not great. It means there's nothing, we're not putting something in that has no value. It's got no, that's not working. But if we can make an element do two things or three things, you know, so if a wall can be a, also be a pot shelf or a, you know, if we can make something do more than one thing, then you, you've reduced the amount of stuff you have to do, but you but there's somehow your architecture is clearer and and more legible and more understandable, and 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 that's sort of the strategy we have is that we start and we tend to take things away all the time, um, and if and if we can't take something away we might try and merge it with the thing next to it. <laughs> you know, can we, how do we make that work better without having five things? Um, so, I mean, I think that, that idea of clarity, you know, more and more we're trying to, we're, we're seeking clarity in, in, as a design response. You know, we're looking for the cartoon with three lines on it often. Mm. But it's a dangerous thing too because, you know, you don't want to get to the point where you're not doing quite enough. <laughs> As well, you know, I think that's as big a failure as doing too much. Um, and he's got quite a good sense for that, and I'm not sure I have. But I guess that's the that's the knife edge we're sort of walking. At, I think that we're trying to do um, enough, but not too much. Um, I guess as a typology, the way the way we put buildings together is is we, we're quite considerate of that, aren't we? How we think actually how many pieces we need and how they fit together. And how we could fit other things to them, you know, at, at a later date. Yeah, I mean, and that, I'm, that comes through from you know the way I was taught and, and where I grew up as well, and that, that notion of thinking about an assemblage of things. You know, that's the way Burry was teaching us construction at back, at, way back in those sort of formative years. Um, we had a, a really well, I was lucky enough to have um, a really good construction lecturer. And he's the guy who's working on Sagada Familia now, the New Zealander over in Barcelona. And he often talked about this notion of an assemblage and of a kit of parts. And so that's been something that's, you know, but it takes about 15 years for that to brew in the back of your head until you understand the way that you can use it, I think. I mean, I, I guess that's the other thing that we've been lucky that, um, well, not lucky, there is, it, it is deliberate, but there are a series of projects that's starting to coalesce where those ideas are making sense to us and we're being, we can see the path forward. And I'm not sure that that happens for everyone. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think we... Well, we like what we're doing and we like, yeah. we like the... We, we like the type of action that we're doing. Uh, the delightful thing, the thing that makes you want to come to work every day is that we... I think we can make more of a job than other people could make. You know, I guess that's the thing that keeps me interested. That with less resource, I think we can do more architecture, yeah. and that's pretty um, that's pretty fulfilling. At the end of a week battling the city council and the planners and every other bastard to know that 
um, you can do something that's uh, meaningful and relevant and, you know, that you're, you're making a contribution. Yeah. And that's great. And I think just, you know, that life's not about, um, to us anyway, life isn't about uh, what incredibly flash light fitting you've got. You know, the architecture doesn't live or die on that light fitting. And, and um, that light fitting might help space. But the space should live or die with you, with you, you know, should be fine without it. And so our approach is to get, you know, to get things to feel right, both in the landscape and in the context, but in, in, as a space. And we're far more interested in that than we are in, you know, what sort of carpet is or what sort of light fitting that is. And that obviously all has to come and is all part of it. But that uh, is often a kind of, um, I think, People jump to to the finish very quickly. We're going to have to have that type of light fitting, and that's going to make the space. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's, you know, and and includes a lot of um, sort of other types of architecture.